broadcast. We're so glad that you're allowing us to come into your home or your office or wherever this video may be viewed. Uh, we understand that we're reaching around the world and we're inviting you to ask us any question you have about God and life. And we'll give you an answer directly out of the Bible. Uh, one of our precious partners in ministry has uh, asked me a question. And the question is, Brother Harris, if the Jews are God's chosen people, do they have to be saved now? Or, or, or are they all automatically saved? Well, you know, that's a, a very good question. And uh, I want to answer that. And I also want to include some information that people need to know about God uh, and the Jewish people. Uh, the Jewish people are the chosen people of God. And in the Bible, when that's referenced, what that means simply is this, that God made a covenant with our father Abraham. And uh, God promised Abraham that he would make of him a great nation and that he would be the father of many nations. And, of course, the prophecy that God gave uh, to father Abraham back there uh, in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 11 was twofold. Uh, God made a covenant with Abraham uh, that he would be a father of a messianic nation or kingdom. Uh, and probably that's a better term, sp speaking of Israel, uh, a kingdom. And uh, also God was given Abraham uh, confirmation of the same prophecy that he gave to Adam and Eve, that from their seed a Messiah would come uh, to save the world. And uh, I know that there's a lot of confusion and a lot of people out here wants to muddy the water on the issue. But the truth of it is, the Jews are God's chosen people. Uh, and their role uh, has been played in the past as being that people uh, out of earth that has brought Messiah, Jesus Christ, into the world. And, uh, of course, God told David, now if you want to go up into the book of Samuel, God told uh, King David who was a descendant and is a descendant of Abraham and, of course, Jesus. That bloodline goes all the way back to Adam. But God promised King David that one of his sons was set on uh, the kingdom of Israel forever. And uh, so in our understanding of Israel, God's chosen people, uh, God prophesied to Abraham an uh, earthly kingdom uh, and a son of Abraham that was set on the throne. And that's going to happen. Uh, you know, that's why the Jews missed Jesus when he first came. Uh, he didn't come riding on a white stallion. He come riding meek and lowly on a donkey. And they failed to comprehend that he was the Messiah and that he had a savioral ministry before he would come to earth and reign as an earthly king. You say, well, Brother Harris, when is Jesus going to come and reign as an earthly king. Well, he's going to come back, rapture his church home to heaven, and uh, then there's going to be a tribulation period. And at the end of the seven tribulation period, Jesus is going to come back on a white stallion with all the raptured saints, and uh, he's going to take control of this earth, and Jesus will literally sit, literally sit on a throne in Israel, yes, the one on the news, and he will reign and rule over this earth and the born-again church will rule with him for a thousand years. Now, since we've got the physical kingdom out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about the spiritual kingdom that will reign forever with him. Now, you know, blessed are, are any Jewish people that will get to be a part of that millennial kingdom, but it's more blessed uh, to be born again. Uh, Jewish people don't have an edge over a Gentile when it comes to the new birth. Uh, a lot of people are assuming that because uh, you're earthly Jewish that you are right with God. That's, that's false. Uh, that's not true. In the book of Galatians, uh, over in chapter 3, in verse 26, the apostle makes it clear, 
For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now that's some good news. You know, if you're Jewish, if you're Greek, if you're Gentile, barbarian, uh, it don't matter. If you'll let Jesus come into your heart through the born again experience, you become by faith a descendant of Abraham in the spirit. And you are born again. And you will get to rule with Christ for all time and eternity. So the Jewish natural birth does not have an advantage over any born again Christian. And uh, I want to share this with you. Uh, Paul goes on to say in Galatians 3 and 27, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew, there it is, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And you say, well, Brother Harris, that don't, that don't, that don't say what you said. Yeah, it does. Listen to the next verse. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs, <laughs> hallelujah, according to the promise. So what's the truth? The truth is this. If you're Jewish, we love you. We thank you for what you've done for the world and bringing Messiah in, in, into planet Earth. Uh, if you're a, Jew, a Jewish person, we love you. But you're a sinner and you need to be saved. You must be born again. Just like Jesus told Nicodemus in St. John 3 and 3. He told that religious Jewish leader, except you're born from above or born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen to me carefully. We should be grateful for the Jewish people, and I am. And if you're Jewish, thank you for all uh, your tribal family has done uh, for bringing salvation to the world. But you are lost and undone if you're not a born-again Christian. If you're a Gentile, anywhere in the world, regardless of your race, regardless of your color, regardless of your creed, and regardless of your religion, you must receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior to be a part of that kingdom that will endure forever, and that's the born-again church. Thank you so much for being with us, and God bless you.